All right, everybody. I have Joshua. Joshua's agreed to hang out with us for just a little bit today. Um, he is uh, <laughs> got a lot to get done and only giving us a short amount of time today. So, Joshua, man, thank you so much for for talking with us for a little bit today and uh, coming on and agreeing to share your story a little bit. Uh, I'm going to turn the floor over to you, man. Introduce yourself. Talk to us about yourself. Well, I'm evangelist Joshua Milton Blay. I I was referred to as General Botnicki, one of the warlords in the Liberian 14-year uh, civil crisis. Well, I was born to be the priest to my tribe. Uh, as a priest to my tribe, I was responsible to uh, negotiate between my tribes, my kinsmen, and the gods of our father, the gods we worship. Okay. Uh, fallen angel called Nyagbeawe. He is one of the uh, the primary god in uh, in the entire southeastern part of Liberia. And my father was supposed to be the priest to this deity to represent his king's men, but he was wealthy and educated, so uh, he negotiated with the heirs that he would bring his first son. I was not his first son. He had his first son by a woman from the northern part of Liberia and they called him Benedict. Benedict was uh, was given to the heirs so that he served as a priest to this uh, demonic god but uh, the heirs refused Benedict because Benedict was from a mixed tribe. They thought Benedict would have sold or traded the tribe's okay. power okay. To, to the tribe to his mother's tribe. So they insisted that his mother he, that my father should have a a, a child by a woman from the tribe. Okay. So uh, my father wanted to be uh, uh, show that he did not make any mistake, so he asked them to give to bring forth his uh, to bring forth a woman from the tribe by themselves, uh, you know. So they selected a woman through a lot, they casted a lot, and the lot fell on my mother, who was already married with two children. And so the tradition insisted that my mother left her husband, joined with my father and uh give birth to me that's how i was born okay and she and she returned to her husband however uh, however my mother kept me for for four years and turned me over to my father who introduced me to the principles that i would be an effective priest okay. to the gods of father so he kept me for three years, and uh, every day of the day, the years I spent with my father, he told me wonderful things about the gods of his father. He introduced to me, he gave me gifts, gave me different different things, and told me uh, uh, they were they were uh, 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 goodings sent from the gods of his father. So as a four-year-old child, five-year-old child, six-year-old child, until I was seven, he told me all the good things about the gods of okay. his father. Okay. At the age of seven, my father turned me over to the, to the Edis, who trained me for four years. And for four years, I, I did not see the sunlight. I did not see the daylight. I was trained as a witchcraft for four good years. And uh, every morning by 6 a.m., I am blindfolded. And uh, 7 p.m., uh, I, 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 they removed the blindfold from my eyes when it was already dark. So I did not see the daylight for four good years in my training wow. as a wish. Yes. That's not. When I, when, I, when I was ready to be a priest, I was taken to the to the to the shrine to the huge rock which the gods believe to live and this rock literally lifted up uh after three days and three nights 
chanted by the elders, this rock lift, literally lifted up and I went on, I went on the ice and this rock came back on me where I met this demon who was bruised. Uh, 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 and I'm very sure uh, and I all suspect him that uh, he was one of the, the angels that was, that was chased from heaven by Jesus Christ. Okay. And so, uh, so uh, he's bruised. His entire left side was bruised, and uh, but he could walk as fast as he wished. Though I came and uh, uh, he welcomed me under the earth in the dark, very dark place. I stayed with him eleven days. He also told me every day of my life, uh, every year of my life, he gave me the review of it in a day. And then uh, he, he after, on the 11th day, he showed me other people who served him as priests and he said they were not faithful and he punished them into perpetual torture. He also showed me other people who he said was faithful in serving him as priests and they were dining with him on a daily basis. Okay. And so that he prepared me to be faithful to him um, uh, uh, as I was his priest. So on the 11th day, he released me, he gave me a uh, different eminence of, of authority. He gave me a throne that I could sit on. He gave me a knife that I could use. He painted carry shell all over my body okay. that I could use for remote control. I could okay. use them to disappear. I could use them uh, to hypnotize. I could use them uh, against different kinds of uh, 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 weapons okay. as protect, yes, as All protection. Right. And then I came back to the world, came back on the surface of the earth and uh, was, and became the priest to the tribe. This was 1982. Okay. The tribe had, the tribe, a member of the tribe called Master Sergeant Samuel Kayando, who was in the military, have taken over Two years earlier, 1980, he killed Tolbo and became the president. He overthrew Tolbo in the bloody coup and became mm -hmm. the president of the country. So when I became a priest uh, two years later, 1982, he became my subject and I became the advisor. At the age of 11, I wow. was the spiritual advisor to the president of the Republic of Liberia. That's, and that's, so, that's, that's, that's crazy. And so I continue my preschool from the age of 11 until the age of 25. However, uh, when I was 19 years, when I was 17 years of age, which is 1980, 1989, the war broke up in Liberia. So I needed to move from Sino to come to Monovia and protect and provide full protection for Master Sergeant Samuel Kanyando, who was the president and most of the crime, the, the crime tribe, the, the, the tribe members who were into politics by then. So I continued uh, 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 my preschool by protecting, by providing protections for the rest of the tribe. Okay. Well, Do, Do died and the tribe ran into exile. Few years later, the tribe returned. The tribe returned and uh, uh, honor the name Yulimo, which was, uh, uh, they were mixed with other tribes, but pre uh, 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 dominantly Mandingos, uh, a very strong tribe also in Liberia, who were victim by the war uh, uh, that was brought by Mr. Charles Taylor. They believed the Mandingo uh, was siding with us so they started killing the Mandingos as they were also killing the crown so the both tribe ran into exile and then they had the chance to come back this tribe is also the most of them are Muslims okay. so they got support from the Muslim community uh, uh, and they came back with the crown tribe to take revenge uh, from Sierra Leone back home and so the members of the tribe again reconnected with me who were members of that faction and they asked me for protection again. As I was providing protection, 
split came between the Mandingos and the Crown because the Mandingos wanted to Islamize the struggle, the, the, the joining, when the Crown tried have their own worship values. So they refused uh, uh, that, and there was a split between the two tribes, and then they went into separate factions. The Crown on one side called Unimo J, and the Mandingos on the other side called Unimo K. And so I started uh, 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 providing protection for the Crown tribe. Okay. Well, uh, I was I was between the rule as a priest and a warrior, so I was a a a, a, a traditional priest and a traditional warrior at the same time. This brought my my priestly role to crucial crucial. Uh, uh, states. However, um, uh, I was providing this priestly rule periodically, uh, uh, continuously, but providing this uh, uh, warrior rule periodically. That is, whenever I was needed uh, to serve as a warrior, I needed to appease my priestly rule with a sacrifice, a sacrifice of a human. Okay. And so every time the elders call me for protecting or protection of the tribe, uh, as a warrior, they needed to present a human sacrifice okay. for to prepare me for this role. Um, how many how many times do you think that you've had to had to do that to prepare for that role? Uh, just just a rough estimate, maybe. Well, I, I, I can't remember. If I fought, if I protected them because there were three different fronts. Every front I went to, every every front I went to at a particular time uh, represent one, one battle. So when I went to three, four different, uh, went to the battle three, four different times a day, they have to give me sacrifices for each. Wow. Okay. And this... Yeah, so this continued, you know, for for years. But the most crucial one was 1996. 1996, uh, after making a particular sacrifice that even me, for the first time, my conscience broke me that I should not make this sacrifice uh, because this child was given to me by her own mother when oh, the man. elders could own the child. After the sacrifice, you know, when this child came to me, I think maybe because uh, she was not dehumanized, the other children will be rough out before reach to me, and they already lost, you know, their their personalities before reaching. But this child was like smiling with me. She was very peaceful, very kind, and smiling with me. Maybe because her mother was turning her over to me. Yeah. So she had all her human personalities and her dignities were all intact. So I, I, I just thought I could not, I should not harm her. However, I waited for, for a replacement for hours when everybody waited for me to play my role as okay. a warrior in protection of the tribe. I was still in my shrine hoping for a replacement. However, the mother came back to appeal that if the child did not reach the criteria of the gods, I should appeal to the gods to accept the child. The, the, uh, the child. Many people uh, would believe that this woman is wicked. I don't believe so. I believe she was a woman who was trained to obey the gods that her fathers introduced her to, and she was willing to certify this god at all costs. There are many people today who are Christians uh, who cannot make equal sacrifice. They cannot even make lesser sacrifice with their time and uh, 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 their belonging to sacrifice it by giving it to others, uh, 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 by sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. So I thought if this woman would be a Christian today, she would make bigger sacrifice than that. However, uh, took that child to the slaughter. And after that uh, sacrifice, the blood stain of this child was on my hand when the Lord Jesus Christ 
call out to me in my dialect. I could not speak English, so he spoke my dialect. And he said to me, Andrew de Kirinwe, that is my son, why are you slaving? And when I looked back, I saw a man four to five feet suspended from the earth. Wow. But it was in the cloud. But this man was wearing white laning rope. But he was brighter than the sun. So brighter than the sun that I could not even look at him for a split second. I was forced to bow down my head to speak to him, trying to gauge him, gaze him through the sun, trying to look at him rather through his feet because his feet was in the cloud and the cloud reduced the rate of his brightness. I was seated in the cushy chair, almost like this, seated like this, but I just could not look at him. I was forced to bow down my head to wow. talk to him. That's why I strongly believe the scripture yeah. that said every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Either you do it now or you do it after life. I strongly believe that scripture must be fulfilled in every life. That scripture that we are to say, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is, it is, it is, it is a scripture that, 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 that for some reason, I, I cannot I, I I oh my god for some reason I think everyone need to know that a time will come in their life hmm. that that they will they will definitely bow to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. However, when he said what he said to me, why are you slaving in my dialect? I thought I was not a slave at the time. And so I tried to argue. I said, how will you call me a slave when I'm supposed to be your king? And he said to me, you rightly say you're supposed to be your king, but you are living like a slave. You have your seven on your shoulder. Drop your seven and enjoy your true kingship. And then I told him, I never, I still did not understand. He said, well, you would definitely not understand until you repent and live or refuse and die. Then he disappeared. Hmm. Yes, after he disappeared, after he disappeared, I was worried for the first time because I was warned by the gods of my father that I am not supposed to talk to any other deity. And I knew that what I just met was not a human. I knew he was a god, even though I did not know who he was. It was later on that I realized who he was. But I was worried that I have just talked to a deity and uh, uh, without the approval of the gods of my father. However, according to a group from uh, Charles Taylor territory called the Soul Winning Evangelistic Ministry, okay. they said they were praying for God to destroy every generous that was in that war and they called their prayer operation destroy Egypt firstborn which is the plague the plague that God sent on Egypt in the time of when Pharaoh was king and the children of Israel was in captivity needed to leave so they tag their prayer team that way operation destroy Egypt firstborn 
And actually, a lot of generals die in that battle. But as they were praying against me, a prophecy came to them that they should not pray against me, but pray for me. Because he, Jesus, have arrested me for his purpose. And they bring, and they pray for 54 days. And on the 54th day, I gave my life to Jesus. Turned my back from the life of a general. Controlling more than 500 fighting men. From the loot that I had, more than 3,000 cars under my control. Banks under my control. Houses. The entire city of Monovia was under my command. I left that, turned my arms over to my political leader, and asked my boys who wanted to join me for this new joining. Some of them, far a few of them follow me, and the rest of them never understood me. Some thought I was going crazy. And I turned my back on all of those possessions and moved to the community where those pastors and those Christians were praying from, called Barnave. And I started sleeping in the church on the bench, uh, learning about Jesus. Until today, since 1996, since I met the Lord Jesus Christ, I've never gone back to violence, never gone back to any of my evil practices. And I'm preaching Jesus Christ and his redemptive grace to okay. mankind. Okay. So that is, uh, that is, that is a lot to process. Um, uh... Uh, that is uh, that. That's quite the story. I, I have just just a couple questions, if you don't mind me pausing for just a second. Um, right. Number one, what would you say to to the skeptics out there that that maybe don't buy that story, that maybe don't feel you know that's a big turnaround um, to to go from from General Butt Naked to to Evangelist Joshua. Now, what would you say to those people out there that doubt you? What I would just tell them to do a survey, do a research on my life before and do a research on my life now. They can see that even, let agree that Jesus is not real, that he's fake, but believing in him have given me a better life than what I was as General God naked. Believing in Jesus have made me peaceful. Even if I would go to jail today, I thank God that since I was 11 years of age, I kept putting people in pains, making different sacrifices, destroying the lives of others, hypnotizing others. Um, but since 1996, I have never done such. I have peace today. Even when I went, if, like I said, if I would go to jail, which, which there is still 90% chance of me ending my life up in jail, I can say I have peace now more than what I was before. Okay. Uh, just starting my life. And if you go back to my hometown, you go back to my village, you see that people, you study the entire community before uh, when I was priest to them, and you study the community when they invited me to be pastor over them since, uh, since 2012. How the entire evil in that place have changed, how the life, people, children going to school now, people getting civilized in that area. So, so, like I said, God forbid, if the story of Jesus is just a fairy tale, I think it have helped me and helped my family and helped my tribe more than the, the, the story of Nyagbea where, where uh, that I was a priest to. So that is just simple. Okay. All right. Um, well, how is Liberia right now? I mean, it wasn't that long ago that there was a massive war that just broke out. What is kind of the status of your homeland right now? Well, uh, we, after the war, uh, 2003, uh, uh, we had a peace that we were, that we were managing and uh, a fragile peace as the policy describer of policy makers describe it. But uh, uh, we've got the first female president uh, in Africa, for that matter, uh, 2005, and she tried and lifted up the country to some good status, even though uh, politics uh, change in, in times, you know, but this positions. And then we have a new leader now who's also struggling, you know, but uh, I think he don't understand few things and he have a lot of, lot of 
enemies against him. So the country is like going back down again, uh, business-wise and uh, uh, developmental-wise. Mm. But there have not been wars since 2003. Uh, I have given back, I have tried to give back to the country uh, as I wait for the war crime code uh, to, to be persecuted, even though I went to the truth and reconciliation and I was recommended, I am re recommended for amnesty, but I, 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 as I wait for the war crime code that will decide whether to accept the recommendation from the TROC or not, or not I have been given back to the country. And the, the way I thought was effective was to go to the ghettos and redeem some of those uh, children that I contribute to ruin their lives and then turn hol uh, hologans and turn arm robbers, turn, turn drugs addicts. So I go back there, talk to them and bring them out in the batch of 50, where I try to detox them in my own way uh, 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 and house them for 18 months, feed them, house them for 18 months, introduce them to Jesus, of course, and uh, give them some life skills, uh, construction, okay. uh, driving, baking, so that they can go back and continue, you know, continue the life and continue giving back to the society that they were used to destroy. And since 2007, it have been an effective joining. We have affected the life of 530 young men uh, who are back into society. Uh, presently, we are taking 50 more. This time, we're going very young, uh, between the age of 10 to the age of 15, because we believe uh, since the war, most of the children who are, who, most of the guys who went in the ghettos have started, they started having children in the ghetto, and those children are, are potential uh, uh, hooligans, and things. So we try to go in that ghetto to rescue those kids at that level. That's what we're doing now. Okay. All right. Well, Joshua, man, thank you so much for, for your time today and coming on and, and, and sharing your story with us a bit. I know you said you only had a little bit of time that you were able to hang out with us and we're hitting that 30 minute mark and I don't want to keep you any past any longer than what we already have. So I want to turn the floor over to you one last time. Um, let you close this thing out. However you feel, um, again, sincerest to thank you for, for hanging out with us for just a little bit of time today and being a part of this. I do appreciate that. Joshua, sir, the floor is yours. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I, the Lord Jesus Christ, if he, J Jesus Christ said, if he is lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. And so for you, give me the opportunity for me to lift up how gracious Jesus is, how gracious he is. I want to say thank you. And I pray that uh, he will use this uh, for his own glory. Those of you who are watching me, uh, wherever, what a life or, 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 or afterlife in the future, uh, watching me from this platform, I want you to know that uh, uh, Jesus Christ is real. I did not just read him in book. I could not even read and write. I could not even speak English. So there was there is no way that anyone could have hypnotized me or uh, uh, as many people believe or try to uh, manipulate me. I met him live. I was trained to see in the realm of the spirit as a child from the age of seven to the age of 11. And so I was privileged to see Jesus on the front line. And the passionate things about it, he did not call me sinner man. Even he met me, he met my hands in the blood stain of this innocent child. He never called me sin of man. He called me my son. The word he used for my son in my dialect, I'm Jew, is a deep call from a mother to a child because it means him that was disconnected from my labatical cord. That's, that is a passionate call from a mother to a son. When he said that, I, I uh, up to today, I realized that his deep love for mankind is beyond comprehension. So no matter what it is, no matter what you think you have done, no matter how far the world or life have taken you, Jesus had an expectation and he hoped 
that you can realize that he loves you so that you know he can save you. Thank you Thank so you. much for the opportunity. Thank you, Joshua. You have a wonderful day. Thanks for being a part of this today, man. Thank you. Amen. Bless you.